Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to make this spiral text effect in both Illustrator and Photoshop and show you the differences in each. So the way we're going to start is type out our text and what I did was convert to outlines and I added a stroke and a fill. So you can do whatever stroke or fill you like, but for this tutorial we're keeping the stroke dark and the fill light so you can learn exactly how these transform effects work and just to keep track of what's going on. So we're going to move this to the top and then we're going to hit option and drag down to make a copy. Grab the middle and we're going to rotate. We're just going to align everything. And if you want everything to snap like this, all you have to do is turn on Smart Guides, which is under View, Smart Guides. So we're going to make one last copy here. And we're going to hold Shift while rotating to get that perfect angle and let go. So what I like to do is group everything I've made so far to keep it organized. And we're going to center it. And we can try to do that with Smart Guides, but the best way is to go up to Align. And we're going to Horizontal Align Center and we're going to Vertical Align Center. So that keeps everything in the mathematical center of your document. To make the effect, we go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. So here we see a bunch of options. And for this, we're going to be focusing on Scale, and rotate and copies. So the way it works is basically if you tell Illustrator to scale to 90% and to keep it proportional you have to do both horizontal and vertical. This is telling Illustrator scale the only copy I have since we have zero copies down 90%. Now this is not what we want. If we add a certain number of copies, what this is going to tell Illustrator is every new copy is going to be 90% smaller. So if we add, I usually like to do something like 30 copies. What that does is create this tunnel effect. If you're moving the end result by a certain amount of pixels, that's just going to move everything by whatever pixels you tell it to each copy. So for this, we're going to keep it at zero. As for the angle, for every copy, scale it down as well as rotate it. So if we rotate and I'm pressing up on my keypad to change these degrees one by one, you can see the spiral start to happen. So I like three degrees. You can do whatever you want. If you want to close that gap in the middle, you just have to increase the copies and that will close it up. And I actually like that better. So I'm going to keep it at 50 copies to close up that gap. So we're going to hit OK. And this is basically the final look in Illustrator. What you can do now is either go to object and expand your appearance. What this does is create a path out of every transform aspect in the effect we just did, or you can not do that. And if you head over to your appearance panel, you can bring that up by checking on appearance in your window menu. If you hit this effect, it says click to edit effect. So if you click it, you can actually live update your effect. So if you decided you really want to move that center point, you totally can. I'm not going to, so what I'm going to do is expand. So what we can do now is grab our rectangle tool,
So that is the final look in Illustrator. Now, if you wanted to do this in Photoshop, we can work with this again. So there's just a couple of changes we're going to make before we bring it into Photoshop. First, we're going to remove the outline. So we're going to make this black. So now this is ready to be pasted into Photoshop. So we're going to copy again, and then we're going to paste. If you select shape layer, what this does is it makes a vector of your artwork. So this is a way to translate vector from Illustrator directly into Photoshop. If you want to edit the path, you right click this tool to bring up the direct selection tool. You can actually select individual nodes and you can edit them. We don't need to do that for this tutorial, but that's essentially what a shape layer is. This is the icon for the shape layer. It's telling you that this layer in particular is a vector. So we're going to work with that. So we're going to start by dragging this up to the top. And with a shape layer, if you press A and you select your path, it comes up with a top menu here where you can change the stroke and the fill. So if we want to change the fill to a pink, we'll change the stroke to a blue. And let's just do three pixels for our stroke around the text. So this is looking like the Illustrator version. So now we're going to do the same thing we did in Illustrator, except now we're going to be inside the shape layer. So to activate that, just have your black direct path selection tool, and we're going to select everything. And if you hover over any part of that active path and you press option and you click and drag down, and I'm still holding shift to keep it aligned, let go. What you'll notice is that we successfully copied a path, but that path did not get copied to its own layer. It's still within the shape layer. So we can rename this to your text if we really wanted to. So we can do this again. And when you have a path selected, whatever is selected is going to get transformed when you hit Command T. So we're going to hit Shift just like before in Illustrator. And same thing, we're going to align everything. We're going to hit Enter. And if you need to make any changes, just select the path that needs to move, move it up. We're going to do the same thing one more time. Option drag while holding Shift. Command T. Rotate while holding Shift hit enter. So the way to do this while keeping it a shape layer is you're just going to select your shape layer here and you're going to duplicate it. Command T to enter transform. Scale it down. Rotate it. Press enter. Now we're going to do this shortcut which is option command shift T. We're going to do that again and again. So you may notice that this is a lot slower because it's dealing with a lot more data this way. But this method is way more similar to the way we did it in Illustrator. It's just going to take longer. So once you're happy with the effect, Select all your layers, go to Layer, Arrange, Reverse. So that's essentially how that works in Photoshop. So if we wanted to make a fill layer on the bottom, and all we have to do is eye drop this blue stroke color, hit OK. And now it looks pretty similar to what it did in Illustrator. There's just two different ways to do it. So I hope this helped. And
definitely let me know in the comments what you want to see for the next video.